Good morning, how are you all doing? My name is Sarah, I'm the Real Simple Mama. I'm out here with my girls who are being suspiciously quiet, but it's because I just gave them some treats to shut them up so I could record. And I'm going to do a video teaching you about everything you can do to try to prevent bullying in your flock. So the girls are munching on some grub terra that should keep them content for at least, I don't know, 30 seconds. <laughs> and another question that I get asked on a regular basis is having to do with usually a hen in your flock who's being kind of a jerk and bullying other chickens in your flock. Sometimes it might be a rooster, but I had some suggestions that I wanted to put together. Now, of course, you can always email me here with anything chicken related, and then I can help you as opposed to us going back and forth in YouTube comments like six times. So if it's easier for you and you can send photos or whatever, you can email me instead. But these are usually the tips that I start with to help people out. So there's a couple of different things. And of course, you pick and choose the tips that work for you based on how many chickens you have and what kind of space and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the first thing is that chickens, um, if you aren't aware, chickens do have a pecking order and it is a social hierarchy, like everybody's in their own class, right? And so you have an alpha, which is not necessarily always the rooster. Sometimes a hen will be on the top. And obviously if you don't have a rooster like me, then your alpha will be a hen. And that social hierarchy has to be established and you can see I have a, a video that goes into a lot more detail about the psychology of the chicken and the flock. I have a pecking order video you can watch here if you're just curious about how that works. So the pecking order is inevitable. It's always gonna happen. You can't do anything about it. And of course you can't sit out with your flock 24 seven. So there is gonna be a little bit of nitpicking. I compare it to, you know, you've got three kids sitting in the back seat and they're like, he poked me, she touched me, he's too close to me. So there's gonna be that little bit of like kind of nagging at each other every once in a while and that's normal. What we're talking about when it comes to bullying though is there is one or two birds probably on the bottom of that pecking order who are just mercilessly bullied. I mean like kids in a school yard and you can either see that that chicken they have like bald spots because feathers are being pulled out they might be a little bloody and um, you know they may be um, the bullies might be blocking access to food and water and to the shelter like getting into the coop and that's when it's like okay we need to intervene so before we get to that point if you kind of just want to check yourself along my checklist and see okay is there anything else that I can be doing to prevent that so that the flock stays harmonious in their social order then let's go through that so the first thing is if there's anything you can do to give your chickens more space give them more space. Um, my space, for example, which is just a random, like it's just the way that this property was set up. They have like this area. Oh, see, that's the normal little like griping at each other. Um, but this area has like this perfect little space. And I don't remember the dimensions. It's like 60 by 70 or something like that. Um, but I have seven hens right now. I have one that's locked up. So technically I have six and I wouldn't want to add any more than eight in this space because it's not enough room. Um, chickens, if they are bored or if they don't have enough space, they will start to get gripey and grumpy and they will start to attack the weakest member or the weakest link. Right, Lace? Right, Lace? So number one is do whatever you can to get more space. On that note, you can also think about if it's possible to have multiple feed and water stations. So instead of just one water bucket and one feeder over there, see if you can have one over here and then one on the opposite side of your chicken space. That way, you know, you, if you're one bully, you can't guard two spots at the same time. So there will be enough space and enough food and everything for everybody and no one has to play like queen of the water hole, if that makes sense. So we're talking about giving them as much space as possible and setting up multiple places for them to get food and drink. Remember that chickens need to have access to water 24 seven. Yes, technically they don't drink and in the middle of the night, they don't like wake up and ask for a cup of water. They'll sleep through the night, but as soon as they wake up in the morning, they need to be drinking water. Um, and then they need access to their layer food or whatever chick or chicken food you're feeding them. They need access to that all day, every day, okay? So next, let's talk about something that's a little bit of a tangent. And I promise I'll do a video soon about my thoughts on roosters, um, like in a neighborhood flock. 
But for right now, let's talk about the rooster ratio. And I've mentioned this before. I think I've told a couple people in comments, but I'll say it here for everybody. In my opinion, and it doesn't matter what breed or breeds of chickens you have, you need to have the proper rooster to hen ratio. Because if the rooster doesn't have enough ladies to mate with on a regular basis, of course, if he only has two ladies to mate with, they're gonna get way more attention than they want. And that starts to be really rough on their bodies because a lot of roosters pull out the feathers on the hen's back or they scratch her up with, um, with their claws and stuff like that. So um, the rooster, in my opinion, the rooster to hen ratio should be, you should have at least six hens for every rooster. At least six hens. If you can do closer to seven, eight, nine, ten, that would be awesome because that way the rooster can be satisfied. He can do his thing, but no one hen is getting way too much attention. Does that make sense? One last thing to consider as far as if you're trying to do the multiple food stations, water stations, and multiple shelters, which again, doesn't have to be anything major or fancy, is you want to make sure along with your chickens having enough of those spaces is that they have something to do. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but if you're afraid that bullying is gonna be a problem, or let's say you don't really have as much yard space for your flock as you want, you can also think about diversions that you can do, diversions, just things for the chickens to interact with or to keep them busy. I did an older video that you can find here I'm going to do a newer one in 2021 that has just some updated ideas, but this could be as simple as surfaces for them to climb on. You give them a swing, you can stack up some pallets, you can give them plants that they can eat. You know, if you wanna buy like cheap little marigolds from the nursery or something like that, or if you want to plant stuff like I have done, and now they've got like, you know, this, wonderland that they can play through there are treat balls and all different kinds of things that you can give them you put treats in them and they have to kick the ball around and they only get a few seeds out at a time you can use any kind of weatherproof like rope or string or fishing line and you can string all different kinds of fruit and vegetables and stuff on there um, and then just hanging across almost like you're making like a holiday garland and then they can pick stuff off of that you can hang larger vegetables or fruits um, like I use like a head of cabbage and you can hang it up high and then they have to play like treat tether ball but if you can I know it may sound a little extra and it may be something you're not interested in but I found that if my chickens have a lot of things to do I other than pecking at bare ground and they can go in the coop, they can eat and drink and they can lay an egg and that's it. Um, if you can't, especially if you can't give them a lot of extra space, um, they're in like a smaller coop and yard situation, then think about some things you can do um, and you can look up, there's great ideas on Pinterest. I'm sure there's plenty of other ideas on YouTube. Again, I'll go more in detail and have that video later this year that just gives you some more updates of things that we do to keep them busy. You can freeze different um, fruit or vegetable in like a muffin tin with a whole bunch of water and then pop out those little frozen muffins and give them that. Just things that take time for them to do. Uh, there's a flock block that you can buy. I believe it's by Purina, it's 25 bucks and it's this gigantic, like huge, heavy, like treat cube and that will take them days to go through um, it doesn't have to be something for them to eat of course it can be different surfaces for them to climb on or different things for them to hide under like lean-tos but those are some other things you might want to think about is just giving your chickens like more to explore more to do another thing that really messes with their little heads is if you have any kind of structure if you want to turn it or move it or put it in a different part of the yard even me like taking um, this time of year I go and get bags of leaves from neighbors who don't use pesticides and fertilizers and stuff in their yards and I just dump these bags of dried leaves and the chickens think it's the most fun thing and they spend an entire day just foraging through this huge pile of leaves or you could get like I mentioned earlier with with a rake you can get a rake and just rake up a whole bunch of like dirt or whatever on the side and they'll spend hours just going through it so try to think of some things that you can do that will take up some time and keep them occupied because if they have stuff to do and they have enough space and they feel like everybody has their needs taken care of they'll be a lot less likely to start bullying somebody too okay so a few more ideas really briefly as far as how to prevent bullying as much as possible the next one is whenever possible try to keep chickens of approximately the same age and approximately the same size together for example all of the chickens that i have are full-size breeds lacy who's the pretty black and white one right there 
And what you just saw, that's normal pecking order. It's literally one peck and then it's done. That's normal. That's the kind of behavior that you're not going to be able to prevent. And you really don't need to because that's not really going to cause any type of serious damage anyway. It's just Calypso, the old girl right here, getting her point across. But for the most part, as you can tell, all of my chickens are pretty much the same size. If I was to decide I want to get a couple of uh, other chickens, you can add bantams, for example, which are like the fun size chickens, the ones that are a lot smaller. You could try to integrate them in with full size chickens, but you'd have to be really careful. That can get more into the chicken psychology that I was talking about where you have to see the number of birds that you're going to be integrating who are new so that they're not outnumbered and I'll talk more about that in a second but also if you've got chickens who are just a huge age gap like I wouldn't put baby chicks in with these girls some of them might be nurturing but some of them might consider the chicks competition or a threat and chickens will sometimes kill baby chicks so as much as possible everybody's molting it looks ridiculous oh Gracie's getting all puffed up um, as much as possible you want to um, try to keep chickens of, of about the same age and the same size now when we talk about integrating and I won't speak much about this because I have a lot of other videos about integrating new chickens and how to quarantine but if you are going to integrate new chickens you need to make sure that you're not just adding one it'd be best if you could add more than two at a time and that way if we do have some of that west side story like spatting back and forth there's not just one new guy or new girl who's getting the brunt of all of that so for example i have seven hens right now um really six out here because in my little coop is the quarantine jerk that hopefully I'm getting rid of tomorrow. So really I have six girls. Um, so if I was to integrate, if I was to say, hey, I want to fill my flock out and I want to have my full eight again, I wouldn't want to just add one new chicken by themselves. Even if I do the quarantining back there for two weeks, um, I would want to do it hopefully by getting two maybe three new chickens that way when you put the old guys and the new guys together it's not like six against one it would be more fair it'd be six against two or six against three and then that's that's a lot better if you've got more questions about how to integrate chicks or new birds or specifics on that you're welcome to email me or you could put your question down here right girlies and then kind of going along with an earlier point that I had said, I was speaking about how you could have multiple um, water stations and multiple food stations. A side note or an addition to that is you might want to have multiple shelters. If you have a, um, there's another normal example. You might want to have, um, depending on you know your run and what kind of space you have. I'm not saying you need to have multiple chicken coops. I know that's not always possible, especially if you're like me and you're just a neighborhood chicken tender. But if you can have just a table that's covered or like I have this little covered playhouse. For example, the coop yard, like the covered yard that I have right there, it's a great space. For example, if it starts to rain or if the wind gets kind of bad and everybody needs to huddle up. But to prevent bullying, you need to give them enough covered space too. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that everybody has to have like multiple chicken coops, but the space that I have, you know, with the ramp and the water and the food that's in there, that's not comfortable space for seven or eight chickens to hang out in a rainstorm. You can imagine they'll start to annoy each other and get aggravated and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and it doesn't have to be like a big formal, like I said, it doesn't have to be multiple chicken coops. It can literally just be something that's covered like a lean to or something that has like a, a roof and one solid side on it to block against a north wind, for example. Um, but just have enough space so that if they need to hunker down for a while, it gets too cold, it's starting to snow, it's raining, it's really windy, something like that. Um, also, I guess if you are in a warmer climate, if it gets really hot in the afternoons, you want to have plenty of covered space for all of your chickens um, for them to be able to to hang out and not be on top of each other because that's another instance where they'll where they will start to kind of gripe at each other and there can be more of a problem but those are the ideas that I have as far as preventing bullying as much as possible it's quite possible that everybody will get annoyed with each other all pretty much all of my girls are going through a molt right now like look at Callie with her one tail feather um, so there are going to be times when they start to get annoyed with each other, but just be out, be with your chickens often enough that you can kind of start to notice those trends and you can try to prevent it. I help a lot of people with quarantining bullies. Um, a final note, and you can check out all of my other videos in the chicken behavior playlist that talks about a bully and what I do and quarantining and how to do that and all of those things. But 
I would always recommend that you lock up the bully because not only will it give the victims a little bit of freedom where they can breathe and relax and not be stressed out and grow feathers back and all of that stuff, but the bully gets bumped down. They lose their spot in the social order so that then when you let them back and you integrate them back in with the flock that they have they've been humbled pretty much they've been bumped off of their high spot on the pecking order so i'm here if you guys ever need help or if you have any questions but thank you so much for watching